In a cave in France, archaeologists found six Neanderthal bodies, but they weren't buried or honored. They were butchered. Their tongues were sliced out, their skulls cracked open, and the leftovers thrown into the same pile as hunted animals. What happened here? Were these acts of desperation, conflict, or something spiritual? And the most important question for today, were the Neanderthals cannibals? Today we're going to be examining all the archaeological evidence for Neanderthal cannibalism. This will be a serious science-based discussion grounded in research and following YouTube's community guidelines. But make no mistake, the finds we're about to explore are unsettling and unmistakably human. For over 300,000 years, the Neanderthals thrived across Eurasia. They weren't monsters, and they weren't just some halfway point between ape and man. They are our evolutionary cousins, a group that had broken off to conquer the north while our ancestors remained south. Despite the stereotypes, Neanderthals were complex people. They controlled fire, crafted sophisticated stone tools, hunted massive animals, and even buried their dead. And yet, we continue to find remains showing the unmistakable marks of butchery. So far, they have been found at nearly a dozen sites across Eurasia. First, let's look at the remains found in the French cave of Moulagassi. Discovered in the 1970s, it was proven to be a textbook example of Neanderthal life. The bones of deer, goats, and woolly rhinoceros point to a bountiful hunting season, and they were expertly butchered. Meat and tendons were sliced from the bone, and long bones were smashed open to get access to the fatty marrow inside. This is how Neanderthals processed animals. They were after every last calorie to make the most of their hunt. But their hunt may have not only included other animals, but other Neanderthals. Cut marks were found on the bones of all six Neanderthal individuals at the site, and the way they were butchered sounds like something ripped straight from a horror film. The chewing muscles were sliced from the faces of two young Neanderthals. One had their tongue cut out. All the brain cases and long bones were smashed open, not for ritual, but for calories. Despite having fire, the bones show almost no signs of roasting. It seems the flesh was eaten raw, hastily carved off and devoured. It's unsettling to imagine that you can devour an animal raw, no fire needed, as long as the meat is fresh. And that is exactly what appears to have happened here. The remains weren't buried or honored. We know this because they were tossed among the bones of butchered deer, as if there was no distinction between man and prey. Lead researcher Alban de Fleur said, Human and animal remains were treated very similarly. We can safely infer that both species were exploited for a culinary goal. The site paints a grim picture of the Neanderthal world a time when consuming the brains and tongues of children was not off-limits. It's a brutal glimpse into a world where the line between predator and prey could vanish, even among our own kind. But Moulagassi wasn't the only place where this happened. Hundreds of miles away, in a dark cave in the mountains of northern Spain, we find another scene just as disturbing. Here, around 49,000 years ago, at least 12 Neanderthals met their end. But they didn't just die, they were dismantled. The bones show deliberate defleshing, skulls opened for the brain, and limbs broken for marrow. Whatever happened here, it wasn't quick, and it wasn't clean. At Goyat Cave, at least five Neanderthals, including children, were found. Their bones were marked with cuts, scraping, and careful dismemberment. And lying besides them, the remains of reindeer and horses, butchered in the exact same way. It's clear, to whoever did this, Neanderthals weren't kin. They were meat. There are at least eight other Neanderthal sites that show evidence of cannibalism. For a moment, try to truly imagine living in that world. A world where safety was never guaranteed, and every stranger could be a threat. Now imagine this. It's not hunger driving the violence, it's power. A stronger group ambushes a weaker one. Not because they're starving, but because they can. Because dominance must be shown. And when it's over, they don't walk away. They strip the flesh from their victims' faces, crack open their skulls for the brain, and toss their bones in with the remains of deer and horse, as if there was no difference at all. Because at that moment, to them, there wasn't. While I have painted a grim picture of Neanderthal life, it's time to add some more nuance, because as we'll come to see, cannibalism is far more complicated than it first appears. Cannibalism is often considered brutish and barbaric in the modern day, but the truth is, it isn't as rare as we'd like to believe. It's found throughout nature in at least 1,500 species. 
even including our closest living relatives, the chimpanzees. When it comes to our own species, history is filled with moments where starvation, isolation, or ritual which push people to consume the flesh of other humans. In some instances, people would have starved to death if it was not for the flesh of their friends. Think of the Donner Party. A group of American pioneers who migrated from the Midwest to California in the mid-1800s. Due to a number of mistakes, they were forced to spend the winter in the brutal Sierra Nevada mountains. With no food and brutal cold, they began to starve to death. After a number had passed away naturally, the remaining members began to eat their bodies. And on one occasion, they murdered and consumed two Native American guides. There is no reason to believe that the Donner Party was more immoral or wicked than any other group of pioneers. And yet, circumstance and bad luck forced them into these horrifying acts. While it is easy to look at their actions in disgust, they had no other choice. Now here's a thought experiment. If archaeologists thousands of years from now uncovered the cannibalized remains of the Donner Party, what would they think of us? Would they conclude that Homo sapiens were cannibals too? Well, they could analyze the remains of the cannibalized individuals and look for signs of nutritional stress. Signs of nutritional stress on bones include stunted growth, fragile or thinning bone, and small holes in the skull, all showing that the body was starving and literally breaking itself down to survive. And in some of the cases of Neanderthal cannibalism, we find these exact same signs. At the aforementioned El Cedrone cave in Spain, when we look closer, the remains tell a tale of desperation. Scientists looked at the enamel of the Neanderthal teeth and found several disruptions in its growth. This indicated several episodes of severe malnutrition or illness during childhood. This suggests that these Neanderthals were no stranger to bouts of starvation. They may have even starved to death, and their struggling family had to eat their corpse just to survive. Though we cannot say for certain, the Neanderthals at El Cedrone may have been pushed into cannibalism due to a lack of food making them no more brutish or immoral than Americans in the 1800s. This example is important because it provides us with perspective and understanding for these people. They lived in an extremely tough world where harsh winters would have forced them to hunker down for months without food. In these desperate times, they did what any human would have done in that scenario. Evidence for nutritional cannibalism is also likely for the remains at Mulak SC, which also show malnutrition. Two authors of a 2019 paper about the site said, the cannibalism highlighted at Mula Garci is not a mark of bestiality or subhumanity. If anything, it's a gut-wrenchingly human story of hard choices in desperate times. Though other sites are not as clear. At Goyet and Safaria, cannibalism is clearly documented, though this population does not seem to have been starving. These caves may have been indicative of a darker motive that is legitimately terrifying. The possibility remains that some populations of Neanderthals may have preyed on others for food or for vengeance. There is no doubt that Neanderthals would occasionally clash with one another. After all, what is more human than pointless violence? We do have some evidence that Neanderthals occasionally killed one another, and maybe the slain foes were eaten out of disrespect or even practicality. After all, we are made of meat. An average man has around 100,000 calories. Please don't go repeating this fact to your family. And without some moral objection, why just leave so many calories to rot? Even in some contemporary cultures, loved ones were consumed as a way to honor them. Papua New Guinea is one of the last places where cannibalism has been widely practiced. Cannibalism is practiced for a number of reasons. The most common form is the consumption of loved ones, a form of mortuary cannibalism. The belief is that it is better for the body to be eaten by loved ones than by maggots and worms. It has even been reported that many Papuans would personally request this funeral before death. At funerals, the bodies were cooked and primarily fed to adult women as they were thought to be the best choice to house a spirit. Cannibalism also often occurred during times of war. Fallen enemies were seen as a food source. Their cannibalistic practices led to the spread of dangerous prion diseases. Consuming prion-infected tissues severely deteriorates the brain, which can be fatal in a matter of months. There is no evidence that Neanderthals suffered from prion diseases, though it is certainly possible. The one Neanderthal site stands out from the rest, and raises another possibility. At Krapina in Croatia, dozens of Neanderthal remains show cut marks and fractures consistent with butchery. It's obvious that cannibalism took place, but the motive may have not been hunger. When researchers studied the teeth from the site, they found no signs of severe nutritional stress. 
The site itself dates to a relatively warm period, with plenty of game animals nearby. The faunal remains suggest that these Neanderthals were not starving, they had options. Which means that cannibalism here likely wasn't about survival. Instead, researchers believe that it may have been symbolic. The bodies weren't just butchered, they were carefully disarticulated. Cut marks are found on areas that don't make sense for meat extraction. Some researchers are convinced that these remains are an example of ritual defleshing. Ritual defleshing is the practice of intentionally removing the soft tissue from a human body, not for food, but as part of a symbolic, spiritual, or social act. Some of you may have heard of a sky burial, a practice common in Tibet and surrounding regions where human bodies are left to the vultures to be consumed. But what you may have not heard is that before the interference of the Chinese Communist Party, these bodies were often disarticulated and defleshed by a ritual specialist. The bones would then be crushed and mixed with flour to be fed to the crows. This is done under the belief that the vultures help the soul ascend to the afterlife. This is a genuine belief of these people, and it is done out of respect and reverence. Neanderthal sites like Krapina, La Quina, and Monte Circio show disarticulated, scraped, and altered bones without clear signs of nutritional stress. In these cases, some researchers propose that Neanderthals may have ritually defleshed their dead, as a form of mortuary practice. It is easy for us to consider Neanderthals as mindless, immoral brutes that hunted and ate one another, but considering the diversity of our own culture, it seems clear that the Neanderthals would have had a range of reasons for consuming their own. Some may have starved to death if it wasn't for the already deceased bodies of loved ones. Some may have practiced specific defleshing rituals which fed the vultures, while others chose to eat their kin out of respect. Darker, violent cannibalism almost certainly existed as well. It was a brutal world after all. But if you want to call Neanderthals cannibals, you must also acknowledge our much more documented relation with the practice. In comparison, Neanderthals don't deserve the pejorative label of cannibals. Out of the roughly 300 Neanderthal individuals we have found, around 15 show evidence of cannibalism, and even these remains are questionable. While some Neanderthal bands may have been quite familiar with the practice, I imagine that many of them never would have done it. After all, some Neanderthal remains were buried fully intact. Their culture undoubtedly varied greatly from region to region, and it seems that the vast majority of Neanderthals did not practice cannibalism. To me, Cannibalism is one of the greatest topics in anthropology. It shatters the illusion of universal morality. It challenges everything we know about taboo and expands the possibilities of what it means to be human. And being human is not about what we do, it's about why we do it. Scottish novelist Robert Louis Stevenson wrote, Nothing more strongly arouses our disgust than cannibalism. Yet we make the same impression on Buddhists and vegetarians, for we feed on babies, though not our own. I love this quote because it shows that food taboos are far from universal, and they're obviously super personal. While it is easy to make fun of people who think eating meat or hunting is abhorrent, you'd probably feel the same way if they were serving human veal on the corner of your street. And while some food taboos seem pretty silly to us, they are extremely personal to others. And I for one try to respect that a little bit, especially when you think about how personal we think cannibalism is. Like, if I saw a cannibalized corpse, I would be absolutely disgusted and there's no hiding that. I myself am a hunter, full disclaimer, I hunt deer and grouse and some other critters, but I don't really feel the need to mock people who, uh, you know, don't feel the same way as I do about hunting. The truth is, being human is complicated, and despite our moral high ground, cannibalism has always undeniably been a part of our species. So were Neanderthals cannibals? Sometimes yes, but so were we. Always have been. But the remains found at Neanderthal sites do not make them any less human. Maybe it just proves how human they really were. What do you guys think about cannibalism? Is it wrong? Is it awesome? What about food taboos? And what about moral relativism? I'll leave the comment section for you guys to figure that out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, hit that like button, argue below, and of course, subscribe for more strange and fascinating stories from our deep past. And hey, we're almost at a million subscribers. Well, maybe if each one of you subscribed, we might be. Please, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Arrivederci.